you looking at? What are you? Say it again. Say, three, two. What'd you say? What? I get. What'd you? This guy keeps. Why does he keep? What the? Is he talking about? Stop talking. Stop talking. What the hell? <laughs> what is up, folks? These are my new favorite RGB tubes, the Godox TL60s. These little bad boys are 30 inches long. You can control them with an amazing app, but when you compare that to the industry standard Astera Titan tubes, considering the fact that the Titan tubes are 10 inches longer, but you can get four of these Godox tubes for the price of one Titan tube. So these TL60s are sounding pretty sweet. And what you will find out in today's video is what is most impressive about these little tubes is their amazing color fidelity. So if you're just looking for a quick answer with no proof and opinions, then yes, these are the tubes you've been waiting for. Link down below. For the rest of you, let's break it down. I realized back when Godox sent me their SZ150R that something was changing for the better. The output of that thing is insane. And then when I got the TL30s, which are the baby version of these ones, I could no longer ignore the proof. Godox is rising to the top. And if you ask me, they're going to be giving a lot of these other lighting companies a run for their money. As I demonstrated in a past video, the TLCI rating of the baby Godox tubes, the TL30s, was a 99. And I have my Siconic 800 Spectromaster here with me today, and I'm very excited to test these TL60s with all of you. But first, let's get some specs out of the way. The Godox TL60s have a CCT range of 2700 to 6500 Kelvin, full HSI control, 14 special effects modes that are all customizable, including a new one that moves to the beat of the music. A small Roscoe and Lee gel library, and three different options for wireless control. The app via Bluetooth, a 2.4G remote control, and DMX. Now the Godox light app is very impressive and it is by far one of the most stress-free apps for film lights that I personally have ever used. It's very simple, it identifies the lights immediately, there's no need to create a login user profile, it doesn't require some outside transmitter unit, and it just simply works. There are other apps that exist out there that require you to uh, use a login with your email and password, and I just do not understand that. I'm not making the next mission impossible here, folks. I don't need my lighting setups to have friggin' Pentagon security. The Godox app does what I need it to do when I need it to do it, period. In other words, the Godox light app is king. Now these TL60 tubes have been a pure joy to work with, not only as director of photography, but also as a gaffer. For example, one of my past gigs, I had the pleasure of being John Schweigart's gaffer on a two-day shoot for a company that makes simulators for race cars. And I lit the majority of that job with the Godox tubes, both the TL60s and the TL30s. Schweigart found this really cool way of rigging the tube clamps with really powerful magnets because the set consisted of a steel shipment container, and because of the wide field of view, all of the lights had to be rigged directly to the metal walls. And then I used these awesome A-crate grids from Honeybees to control the spill from the two individual Godox TL60s that were placed directly above the subject. Now, for camera movement, we were using a Kessler Crane Cine Shooter on a slider and it has a motorized pan and tilt head that you can program different camera moves all in one sequence. And the reason for us using that setup was because we had to create a, what I call a time morph transition in camera. In other words, the subject being photographed on camera changed while the lighting had to remain exactly the same and the camera movements had to be precise in the exact same spot every single time. 
So since some tubes were playing directly in the shot, specifically talking about the little Godox TL30s, if they moved even one little inch, the entire setup had to be reshot. And unfortunately, the first go around, I found this out the hard way, but once we solidified all of the lights, the Godox light app allowed me to adjust all of the levels, control any special effects, the brightness, and even switch them on and off. The app just made my job a straight up dream and it really was a time saver. Being able to set a light and then walk across the room and change all of the settings through your phone in a matter of seconds, having something like that that actually works on a real job where every minute is money being spent just proves that Godox is really stepping it up and providing tools for real professionals within our filmmaking community. For another example, I recently was the gaffer on a music video. And we had an industry standard package with light mats, Ari Sky panels, and eight of the Astera Titan tubes. Now, the Titan tubes are amazing. There is no doubt about that. But the Astera app is very convoluted and confusing to use. And it does require you to use their outside transmitter unit. And I don't know how many times I misplaced that thing around set. And my key grip was like, hey man, you know you're supposed to just clip that thing on your belt. And I was like, man, I got my color meter on here, my uh, light meter and my little pouch. I don't need any more extra weight on my belt. Now, if I had a whole day to figure out that Astera app, then sure, maybe it's awesome. But this is what I've been trying to tell people. With the Godox light app, you don't need an entire day to learn how to master it. You can literally open it up for the first time in your life and quickly identify all of your lights and instantly know how to navigate through it and control all of your fixtures. And it doesn't require any sort of outside transmitter unit. So if you'd like to see a more in-depth demo and review of that awesome Godox light app, I highly recommend you checking out my review of the SZ150R. There is a link down below. Because the app does offer a lot of really cool high-end features, including one of my favorites, the color picker. Now, another cool way that I recently used these TL60s was on a little short film where I was the DP. And this was an interesting little script, almost experimental in a way. It was a unique take on a sort of mundane life with the old Shakespearean adage that all the world is but a stage. I kind of thought of it as a hybrid between Mank and Birdman. Anyways, I had to create a sense of room tone in a very confined area. The entire short film take place on the same stage. So I definitely had my work cut out for me by trying to create interesting lighting with different looks on the same stage over and over. And this is where all four of the TL60s came in very handy. So I came up with this kind of shitty rig a while back, but it really creates a beautiful controlled soft source of light. And it actually is perfect for creating a non-obtrusive room tone, or uh, maybe for lack of a better phrase, a more believable room tone. So as you can see here, this is actually the base of the room tone rig. And this is just made with the little quad bank for any tubes and I just pop all four of the Godox TL60s inside the quad bank. Now when you load these tubes into the quad bank I would recommend keeping all the power ports on the same end because depending on the length of your particular shoot it's inevitable that you will at some point have to plug these bad boys in. However I do want to point out that the battery life is very good on these TL60s. And I have not noticed them doing this weird thing that the Nanlite Pavo tubes do. So what I've noticed recently with the Pavo tubes is as their battery life is uh, dying, they lose a quite noticeable amount of output, but also there's a slight color shift. Whereas the Godox TL60s, they maintain the same output and color fidelity no matter what the battery meter is at, or at least that's been my experience with them so far. And also the recharge time on these Godox TL60s is quite phenomenal. So for instance, on John's shoot, I couldn't have wires running to the tubes just because of the way the set was and the wide angle shot. So I obviously arrived to set with them fully charged. And then during lunch, I just let them charge during the one hour lunch. And these bad boys lasted all day long. Anyways, back to our room tone rig. Now keep in mind this room tone was rigged above on a menace arm with a high boy combo stand. So then once they were rigged up there in the quad bank, depending on whatever the scene was, I just wrapped them in 
the diffusion of my choice. Now, on that particular short film, I used two different kinds of diffusion for the room tone, just based upon the look I was after. Uh, for example, I used a $7 frosted shower curtain for night interior scenes, where I was going for a moody look. And then I used an unbleached muslin for scenes such as this one, where I was going for more of a morning golden hour vibe of an interior apartment. Now, the secret trick with this room tone rig is this $32 50 degree egg crate grid from Photo Deox. Now, there are links to all of these items down below. But this egg crate grid right here is something I discovered quite a while ago while falling down a pretty deep rabbit hole over on Amazon. And as all of my Dog Times Patreon members are already well aware of, I've been using it for several months on my turkey sandwich setup. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say turkey sandwich light, then again, there's links to referenced videos down in the description below. But this egg crate grid is 24 by 36, which is actually the perfect size to cover these two foot tubes when they're inside the quad bank. So let me just quickly show you how I would do this. Again, this is a shitty rig, right? This isn't to like take pictures of and show how cool you are, right? This is just to get a really nice, nuanced room tone from above, right? Or a really, really soft uh, key light, you know, if you're going for a moody scene. So I have all four of the tubes here in the quad bank. This is just a scrap piece of unbleached muslin. I always keep scraps in my rag box, right? So here we go, unbleached muslin. We're just gonna drape this around and I'm gonna take one little clamp here and I'm just gonna clamp it directly to the back of the uh, quad bank uh, arm. Okay, so now I have it wrapped with the unbleached muslin. Now, some DPs would refer to this as a ghost light, and pff, as you can clearly see why, right? Okay, so then I'm gonna take the egg crate grid. It's a little uh, grungy, right? But it gets the job done. So all I do is I take this top part because the grid actually has little tabs here, okay? Now, there's other ways you can do this because there is Velcro involved if you wanted to get fancy, but I like things to be quick when I'm breaking down, so it's just much easier for me to quickly unclamp it and throw it in the bag and away I am. But I'm gonna put a little clamp on the back end and now I'm gonna do it with this end too. And now here we go. It is a controlled ghost light or uh, you know, a burrito light, whatever you wanna call it, right? But here you go, it has a grid on it. It's heavily, heavily diffused with that unbleached muslin. I believe unbleached muslin cuts the light stop by four to five stops. So it's gonna make these things super, super soft because you're losing five stops right out the gate as it's pushing through the unbleached muz. And then the 50 degree A crate grid is lose, you're losing about a half or one, anywhere from half to one stop, I would imagine, just because you know it's it's honing the beam, it's it's honing in the spread, you know? So you are gonna lose quite a bit of amount of light. Um, so you would have to consider that you're gonna have to crank these bad boys out at 100, but uh, depending on how far away you're trying to light, obviously, you know, you have to keep the, the, uh, the, the inverse square law in your head as well to calculate how much throw you would actually need for light coverage, you know, when talking about room tone. But again, if you're asking someone like me, my room tone is usually two stops under whatever my key is. So, you know, you, maybe you don't need them cranked up all the way. Now there was a lot more involved with those lighting setups on that particular short film, and we will be revisiting that when I do my full review of the Godox LD150R light panel. But if you are interested in catching a full breakdown of any of the jobs I've mentioned in today's video, then I would highly recommend checking out the Dog Times Patreon. That is where I break down every single job that I do here in Los Angeles. It's a full virtual BTS journey on what it's like being a freelance filmmaker right here in LA. There's no gimmicks, there's nothing to buy, it's just an interactive way to support the show. Now, as much as I love these little Godox tubes, they are not perfect. Because after all, they're only 879 bucks for the entire four tube kit, which comes with a ton of accessories, a nice case, and a really good remote control. But my biggest concern is what we talked about in my last YouTube video when I reviewed the Sunwell MT-1. And that's the fact that these Godox tubes have no built-in diffusion, which exposes all of their individual LED beads. And as you can even see here in the uh, GH5B cam, you can see the horrible reflection that you're even getting off of those beads just uh, based upon the filtration that I'm using on that camera. 
So as you can see, that's a problem for when wanting the tubes on camera. They don't really photograph too well. If you're looking to shine these tubes directly onto someone's face, you will be fighting multiple tiny shadows. Uh, especially noticeable if you're using these things to light products. So that is one of the reasons why I'm constantly shoving these tubes through some sort of diffusion. Now, the only other drawback in my opinion, and I realize this is a little picky of me, but the power cord situation is a little nuts. So you get four really, really, really long power cables, okay? Along with four of these power switch adapters. And quite frankly, it's a lot to lug around when you have the four piece kit. And also I do want to point out when talking about, you know, semi-professional filmmakers on set, there's usually an abundance of stingers available. So I don't really see the tendency to want these power cables so damn long. So something that I really wish was available for this four piece kit specifically is something like a four way splitter. Because when using all of these tubes together, like in my room tone rig, for example, it would have been so nice and clean to be able to charge all of the tubes with only one cable. Hell, even with only two cables. And look, here's the thing. I understand the need for four individual cables. You're not always going to use all four tubes. I'm just saying I would like to see at least some sort of four-way or even a two-way splitter option because that's actually one of the things that I really enjoyed about the Nanlite Pavo four-foot tube kits is they came with splitter charging cables. So you could charge both of those tubes with one cable. And because in terms of rigging these lights, like on that short film where, you know, these four little tubes are just so small, but then when you add in the long ass power cables and each one of them has this, you know, little square power adapter box and there's the cable flying everywhere, it gets pretty chaotic really quick. Specifically in our scenario where the entire rig was 10 feet up in the air. And now you gotta figure out how to tie up all the cables and these, you know, little switcher power adapter boxes. You got four of these bongo tied to the menace arm. And you know, I love my gaffer Dave, but after he's seen all those cables and power switch boxes, he's kind of giving me dirty looks. So it's just something to think about and hopefully uh, we can see something, some sort of different option for power cables in the future. Okay, anyways, I'm done complaining now. I have both of my Sekonic meters right here. And you'll notice I have both the Godox TL60 and a Nanlite Pavo 30C, i.e. the four foot version. Now, unfortunately, I don't any longer own the two foot Nanlite Pavo tubes, so I won't be able to do a direct shootout today in terms of output. However, with the four foot Pavo tube here, we can definitely still compare the color rendering and color fidelity of each of these brands of budget friendly tubes. So let's jump right into this. Now I'm going to set each one to 5600 Kelvin and put it at 100%. I used my Bosch laser measure to test, uh, sorry, to measure the distance. So from this quad bank where they are all the way to the wall, which is the dog times uh, license plate back there, that is um, exactly six feet or two meters. I'm gonna turn off the main two lights here and we're gonna measure the Pavo tube first. And let's get a reading, see what's going on with the colors and everything. Whatever camera settings you put into your light meter is going to affect not only your f-stop, but the amount of those foot candles being put out. But if you look here on the Spectromaster, it's telling you the real amount of output here. So right away, we see the color rendering in reality is 5140. Even though I've set it to 5600 on the back of the Pavo tube, it's only giving me 5140. And as you can see here, it's showing that it's really magenta because anytime the Spectromaster is, is telling you 2.1G, that's telling me to add green, okay? Whether on the light or in camera itself. And 2.1 is not just plus two, it's actually more like probably plus 10. But if you notice here, the TLCI is pretty good. TLCI is 99. And at that two meter distance, it is giving us 181 lux or 16.8 foot candles. Now 16.8 foot candles, that is really good for this four foot Pavo tube, considering that an Astera Titan tube is only 18 foot candles. Now granted, the Astera Titan tubes are actually shorter than a four foot Pavo tube because Astera Titan tubes are only 40 inches long. So 18 foot candles versus this almost damn near 70 foot candles. That is very comparable to an Astera Titan tube. I tell people that all the time. However, that color rendering, maybe not so much. Let's pop out of here and go look at the CRI. 
So there you go, a really low CRI rating, in my opinion, a 93, that's not too hot out of this Pavo tube, right? So what you'll see is hurting it the most, if you jump down here to the R9 channel, that R9 red channel is really bad. That's a 71, that's pretty horrendous, right? And then as you can see, uh, a, lot of these, no, a lot of these channels are under 90, which isn't really ideal. So that's what's pulling that overall CRI rating down. You'll notice our R10 channel is only 88. The R11 channel is only 88.2. The R12 channel is pretty bad at 83.3. And then the R15 channel is 86.5. So this tube's kind of hurting pretty bad in terms of CRI. Um, so that's not too good there. So now let's see what the Godox TL60 is going to give us. I am maxed out at 5600 Kelvin, 100%. There we go. Oh, she's clean. She is so, so clean. All right, check this out. The real output is 14 foot candles. That's only two and a half. You know, if you wanted to round the Pavo tube up and say it was 17 foot candles, you'd say, okay, so the four foot Pavo tube is three foot candles brighter than the TL60, but I mean, it's way longer, right? The Pavo tube, the four foot Pavo tube, the 30C is four feet, 48 inches versus 30 inches of the little TL60. And it is giving us 14 foot candles at that two meter slash six foot distance or 151 lux. But look at this TLCI rating, 99 TLCI. Look at our green magenta shift. It's clean, it is super clean, superior, zero, zero, no tint either way, so that is really nice. And our, our color rendering is 5654, and I have it dialed to 5600 on the back of the unit. So you are getting a very accurate color out of this TL60. Now let's jump into the CRI chart, 96.5. So pretty good CRI, much higher reading than the Nanlite Pavo tube. Let's see if any of our channels are in the 80 region. Yep, our R9 is a little, it's 89.6. So the red channel, the R9 channel isn't nearly as bad as the Pavo tube, but it's still not great. Um, another one that seems to be hitting under 90 is the R11, that's 80, 89.9 but all the rest are really, really superior. So again, it is that R9 channel and the R11 channel that's pulling that overall CRI rating down just a tad, but at the end of the day, um, really, really clean light, especially considering how accurate it is in terms of the color rendering and no, gr no crazy green magenta shift, which actually is important. I, I, I wanted to point out that the TL60s do not have a way to adjust for green magenta shift on the tube. So maybe that can come later in a firmware update, I don't know. Now the app is gonna tell you that you can control it, but the reality is it's not changing anything on the tube because I have tested that with the Sekonic Spectro Master 800. Okay folks, so there you have it. These Godox TL60s are available in singles, two-piece and four-piece kits. Links are down below. Do not sleep on these Godox tubes. They are absolutely awesome. I just, I absolutely mean this when I say this. I love these tubes. And these are actually super comparable to the Astera Helios tubes, which are the baby brothers of the Astera Titans. And the TL60s are eight inches longer, thus giving you a little more output than those expensive Helios tubes. Just some food for thought, folks. As always, thank you so much for watching this video in its entirety. If you liked it, please let it be known by smashing that like button and please share it with all of your internet friends. If you are active on Instagram, we finally started an official account for Dog Times Productions. I encourage you to give us a follow. I do not double post, so the feed over there on the Dog Times Instagram is very different from my own personal Instagram, which is at Kid Tech. And again, if you are a fan of what I do or you love watching behind the scenes videos or learning from cinematography breakdowns and you wanna be a part of a private filmmaking discord club, then please check out the Dog Times Patreon community. It is by far the number one way to support the show and it packs a lot of benefits for its members. As always, thank you for watching and for now, that is a wrap. You ready to go again? That's a yes. I should have prepared for this a little better. I need my unbleached muslin, dude. Fuck, I gotta go downstairs and get that shit. All right, let's cut.
Now the only other drawback in my opinion and now it's rolling. What the fuck, stop.